what they were supposed to be doing. But their pride, and they were very super selfishly ambitious. Probably felt that they could now that they've been set apart. And what happens is they go in there and the Bible says fire came from God and smoked them. Burnt them up. Because they had been consecrated. But the very next day, they cut off. Because they didn't take this seriously. These people who are consecrated, this isn't like special, like people who have great skills or ability. These are just people who can follow directions and who want to follow God's directions. When you want to follow God's directions and you obey God's directions, He sets you apart and then He uses you for His glory. Whether it's in the temple, whether it's on a roof, whether it's in a boardroom, whether it's in front of a canvas, whether it's behind a drum set, whether it's whatever. It might be in the military. When you say, God is my God, when you say that, you are saying, I want to follow his directions. I mean, I have all the answers right now. And this is new to them. They just got consecrated. I don't, but God, I want to follow your directions. Because of their pride and because they did not take being set apart seriously, the ultimate failure. They did not have time to repent. They were gobbled up right then and there. And it's all right here. They, not only did, now look, four, Aaron had four sons here in this chapter, four sons. Two of them are done, they're dead, they're gone. He called the uncles, he, he called the other family members, come carry him out. And they have to pick him up by the coat and drag out these dead boys. What do you think the other two are thinking? I better not screw this up. <laughs> what do you think the other two sons are saying? <laughs> we just saw our brothers, they were all consecrated together. We just saw our brothers get burnt up from fire from God. This wasn't fire that jumped off the altar. This is fire that came from God and burnt them up. The strongest, the best, and the older of them. What do you think the two younger ones are thinking? I'll be scared. Wouldn't you be afraid to kind of do God's will? Or afraid to do what God told you? Would, that would kind of freak me out. If nothing else, it would make me say, okay. I ain't consecrating <laughs> Do you see what I'm saying? Some people say, get this consecration business. I'm out. I'm not trying to get smoked. And then there's some people who say, oh, instead of having a healthy respect for God, they might have a fear, terror, and do their job in terror. What am I saying to you? Do you have any people who are older than you or your peers that you've seen make the same mistake? Would you make the same mistake they made? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you have older brother, sister, or maybe you have a cousin, or maybe you have friends, and you see the mess they're in. You should have that same kind of, oh, note to self. Don't do that. Mm. And God puts people like that in your life too. The Bible says everybody was created for him, even the wicked for the day of judgment. God will use people to teach you a lesson that you don't have to learn yourself. Aren't you glad about that? Mm -hmm. That's consecration is, you know what? You're going to make your mistakes. But there are some mistakes you don't have to make. Mm -hmm. You don't have to go back to the foolishness. Or if, you, if I see this one over here getting pissy drunk, right? Falling over themselves. Why would I go right behind them and do it? I have examples in this book that tell me I'm not going to lie to God. I'm not going to lie on God. I'm not going to lie on his people because there are consequences for being consecrated. It's a good thing and a bad thing. Yes? But can't that decision go back to the flesh and the spirit? The flesh will tell you to not. Nah, nah, it's all good. Believe it. But then the spirit... In you knows that it's wrong and something might happen. Who are you going to listen to? You have to figure out. Consecration tells you who you're going to listen to. When I say it's a good thing and a bad thing, I'm not talking about consecration being a good thing or and a bad thing. Consecration is only a good thing. But the bad part is you're going to have to make some decisions. Otherwise, you're going to get in this failure cycle and you're never going to get to the success part. You're going to keep doing this over and over again. This is the key. It is saying, I want God's plan for my life. I want God's will for my life. And that's what it's going to be. 
his other two brothers. He said, listen, I know I would have been sitting back looking like, all right. They just, I, they are carrying my, I'm watching my brother getting carted out of here. They are dead. They are charred. They are burnt up. Learn from that lesson. What lessons could you learn from? Tell me a lesson. Give me a lesson. Tell the class a lesson you learned from watching somebody else. Make a mistake. Yes. Um, somebody that I know that's really close to me was living in sin, but everybody felt that they were saved mm -hmm. and sanctified. But like when they would go with their friends or whatever, they were the complete opposite. Right. So basically, with, when they say what happens in the dark shall come to light, it came to light, and it like it was that's really a, really bad. For that's them. a big lesson. That is a great lesson. But you do in the dark. There's nothing. You, the Bible says. I've cut my own self off. The Bible says that even the night is like noon in him. Even the darkest of night is like the daytime. So there's nothing you can do to hide in the dark and find out. That's a good lesson to learn. What other lesson, lesson did you learn from watching somebody else mess up? This is not being selfish. This is just wisdom. What did you learn? Because in failure, we learn. Whether it's your failure or somebody else's. What have you learned from somebody else? I can stay in bad relationships. Hmm. You learn what you will and will hmm. not take. Okay. What won't do hmm. and all that kind of stuff. Absolutely. Absolutely. Watching somebody in a relationship. Uh -huh. I've seen what, um, people who are not sure of themselves and tend to follow and take advice from other people who are already in bondage or. Mm. And I see them go down with them as well. That's, yeah. that's so sad and true. That's true. When you're following the wrong people, or some people just press, they just want to be in with a crowd and they're doing what everybody else does. You don't realize that, that path goes straight down the hill, the Bible says. It's the path of death. It is. What else? What have you learned? Think about high school. Think about think about now. Think about what you've seen on television in the news. Tell, tell me something that you've learned from somebody else that you said to yourself, I ain't doing that. Or you made a note to yourself. We have to learn from what's around us. God has put wisdom all around us. The Bible says she cries in the streets saying, listen, just come to me. I'm going to teach you some things. What have you learned from somebody else that keeps you from making a mistake? We're not talking about conceit and pride. We're talking about this. And I'm important to God. You know, I don't have to do that. What oh, uh -huh. don't download movies from the internet. Why did you learn that? Hmm? Because. Uh, <laughs> because the cable company called my boy and was like, "You downloaded this movie. We want this much money from you." And he actually didn't download that movie. But he's downloaded a lot of movies. Oh my gosh. Yeah, so after that, I ain't downloaded no Did more you know? movies. I know, that's right. It's hard. <laughs> 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 it's like some of his things. Because. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nah, he was not on the fix or nothing like that. Why would the fans call him? Right. The cable yeah. company. But, you know what I'm saying? But that's real. That's a practical lesson. You know what I'm saying? And then when you like go up for like clearances and stuff, when you try to get a job and try to get a clearance, that's something they also check. Like, what have you downloaded? And something they put on their website. If you are downloading things and applying for this job, stop. Are you serious? Yes. Yes. That is vicious. I just went through the whole clearance process, and that's on a lot of those sites. If you are downloading things illegally from the internet, stop. How do you download illegally? Isn't there a download button? Like I guess free music. Isn't like a software or something? I don't know. Like remember, what's that thing? Like the Napster, Napster, Napster and stuff yeah, like Napster. that. You can't I don't download. know how to download things for real. Uh, <laughs> right. Okay. Right. Right. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Right. What are we talking about? I don't download no movies. Okay. <laughs> but that's why I learned that from my boy. Yeah. After the cable company hit him up. <laughs> and it's not it's just one dude. I know another guy, he got a um a letter in the mail from the cable company. He's like, Yeah, you downloaded these things. Stop. <laughs> but what's the point? I mean Because because the Hollywood will come after you for that money, just like the music industry will come after you for that money. Hollywood will come after you. Oh, man. It's like, you're downloading my movies. We want X amount of thousand dollars. That's part of a fee they do. Because they're losing their money. Because they are losing money. That's right. Well, I learned that I learned you don't leave a baby in a hot car. 
Mm. Oh, oh wow. I saw a video on Facebook. It was the saddest video ever. Oh, oh my god. god. Was it a black oh, person? Oh, you talking about that big? No, it was like um, a reenactment of a mother leaving her child in the car. That's terrifying. Yeah, with an actual child. That's a real fear of it. No, like, it was like the a black, black guy, guy, right? No, she was I saw the black guy sitting there. I saw the guy. Who the did. black guy, what? It was a guy who actually simulated. He sat in a hot car. He was just like, look. I'm saying out here in this car. He was like an Alabama. You about to die? I don't understand why people leaving their babies in the car. He did it to prove a point to see how it feels to be left in the car. Oh, there's been, been a couple of incidents of that recently. Yeah, yeah. There's the one woman who left her kid in the car to go shopping. Yeah. Her kid's a dog to go shopping. Another woman who left her kid in the car to go on a job interview. Yeah, yeah. I saw that. And she went to jail, right? She went to jail. Yeah, yeah. That's right. The one that went for the job interview got off. Did she get off? And I know. She got some cool. Yeah, she did. She, she did. was black. Yeah. She, she was, was black. Yeah. She had nobody to watch. 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 She had nobody to and you always think the other one, I say, get your brother, get your sister, you know. Yeah. I can't do that. I don't, I can't do that. Because people are like, Patrick's like, I don't understand. The other one's like, how do people leave their baby in the car? I don't understand. I don't understand either, but I have you that constant, your mind it, it nags. Because yeah. I'm doing a head count everywhere I'm at. But I learned, you don't, you do leave that baby in that car, look what's about to happen. Mm -hmm. I, I remember in the winter times, not just in the summertime, but in the winter yeah. time. I was going to a school to drop something off to do something for for my job, and I parked and I heard this baby crying in the car, freezing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She was strapped in the back seat in her car seat, hollering, and I could not leave this baby in the parking lot. I got out and I was, it was so cold. I didn't have the right coat on. I was and I stood at it. I stood at the car like this. I said, it's all right, baby. And then she saw me, ah! <laughs> 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 oh, she was wiped out. And I was like, shh, ah! And she was just kicking and hollering. And I said, I cannot. I don't know what this baby, if I got to bust this one that I got to and take this baby in the stove, in the play, wherever. But it was right, it's right there in the school parking lot. So I'm just standing there, gritting my teeth. The daddy comes outside after like 35 minutes. Oh, no, no, no. I'm, mm -mm. I'm late for work. I'm late for work. Because I did this first. I said, okay, I'm going to do this and then I'm going to go into work. I'm standing out there. My hands are numb. My face, everything. My ears are burning. I'm miserable. And I'm standing like this. The baby eventually realized I wasn't coming to kill her. So she started, stopped screaming, you know. But I'm standing out there like this. And I'm from Florida. So I was. <laughs> 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 I can't tell you what went through my mind while I was upset. <laughs> so I was like this. The wow. daddy comes out, strolling out. Mm. He comes out, looks me up and down, gets in the car, don't say thank you, don't say, I said she was crying. <laughs> hey, about his own time. Hey, Travis, I'm gonna stand in the car like this. I would have chased them. <laughs> you should have been calling the police. I was like, I'm gonna try to call the cops. What is that? Services person. You see what I'm saying? And I don't like, your kid is I'm going away. Maybe, maybe there's an emergency. Maybe something's going on. But this baby's messed up. I mean, he literally oh, no. looked me up and down like, thanks. It was like that. And I was like, he, he didn't even he, he didn't even say that. He just mugged me like maybe the gas banks like. Mm -hmm. I was like. That's not just with babies anymore, it's with the elderly too. They found a 98-year-old woman oh, in Maryland ooh. Ave in a parking lot in a casino house. They love 97 oh, and they gave her Come on, church. Come on, church. 98. She was dead. Wow. She wasn't dead, wow. but she um she was wheelchair bound, so she couldn't oh, she couldn't get out of the car. She couldn't do anything. So um what is it? No services came stuff. and took her. So she's in the care of them now. That thing got a hundred! Pretty much. I know my hundred. My hundred. Should be your mama yeah, in the car? Oh, wow. Just send me at the door. Right. 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 Right.
happen. Because people are going down. Now people mm -hmm. are accidentally leaving their kids in the car. You can't tell me you accidentally. After the first big news story came you out. You know what I'm saying? People going to work with the kid. The kid's dying. They say, well, I didn't usually take my kid to, to school, but my wife told me to do it today. That and dude I tried to kill his kid. I have forgot to like drop Nala off sometimes. It's for this kid. Do you see something? That's why. That's why. That's 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 can, I, you can't like, but I can't can. because sometimes stuff just be on your oh, mind. Yeah. He said he just jumped out of the car and went to work within eight hours. Came back. If he was asleep, but something. that same dude is also feet. googling how long it would take to kill an animal by leaving it in the car. Do you hear what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And he yeah. see, my man, he <laughs> took the baby to breakfast before he went to work. What? You know what I'm saying? Who's back here? You know who's back here? But this is my point. My point is there are lessons we can learn. There are lessons we have to learn that. Don't have to take you dying by fire mm -hmm. before you can learn it. That's the ultimate, that's a failure that you could have learned. This is realizing you have a purpose that you may not know what your purpose is right now, but you do have one, and God has set you aside from it. There are lessons you have to learn not only from the Word of God, but in the world around you. That God is saying, "Listen, you cannot. You have to make a separation, a difference between holy and unholy, clean and unclean, wise and stupid." Don't have a wife and a girlfriend. <laughs> That's simple, right? We'll get your sports team. This is real. This is reality of it. These are things we have to learn, and I'm, I'm challenging you. You can look at unconventional things and learn biblical principles, biblical lessons from looking at what you see in the world around you. God will teach you something that will keep you from making the same mistake. Consecration isn't just about not making mistakes. It's about realizing, hey, my life depends on this. This walk that we walk is really a life and death situation. People are watching you. Your life, the quality of your life depends. You download movies, the quality of your life just changed when the people send you a letter and it's documented and you got a record now. The quality of your life has potentially changed because you didn't learn. And see that, you taught me something because I didn't know. I, I'm not a big movie person anyway, but I didn't know. I'm tech savvy. <laughs> oh, I'm thinking that. Shh. Where's my money? I don't have any money. It's not the $10 to get in the theater. No, they want thousands of dollars. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used. And then that's not You know that, you know that FBI? <laughs> you know that FBI thing that plays before all the movies? Yes, don't copy, no. don't copy this. Yes, and if you do, I thought that meant being in the movie theater with the camera and like. That means a lot of things now. Uh, it just means whatever they want it to mean now. See? <laughs> what? So how do we walk? Here's a scripture. Scripture says we have to walk circumspectly. We have to walk looking around like, okay, where the traps? Where the thing? You literally have to walk, not in paranoia, but you have to walk saying, I know the enemy's out to get me. I know he doesn't want me to live right. I know he wants me to make a fool of myself or to be humiliated publicly. I know he doesn't want me to make it to heaven. I know he wants me to be stuck here. Not knowing. This is good coming closer to God and saying, Lord, tell me what, teach me, and I'll do it. That's it. Teach me, I'll do it. If he says, and this is one of my things, I learned, I learned this, I learned this, uh, everything I learned from the Bible, I learned from life. And everything I learned from life, I find in the Bible. The Bible doesn't have everything, the Bible doesn't have every single answer to every question you may ever have. It has every question, every answer that you need. You know what I'm saying? Okay, who's the next president? The Bible doesn't have that. You understand what I'm saying? We don't, the Bible doesn't have that kind of information. But the Bible, everything you need, you, you, you see what I'm saying? Everything you need is here. I learned these proverbs. Here's one that I learned. Let me, let me pull it up for you. Well, my son, attend to my wisdom and bow thine into my understanding. This is Proverbs 5. That thou mayest regard discretion and that thy lips may keep knowledge. Here it is. For the lips of a strange woman drop as a honeycomb and her mouth is smoother than oil. But her end is bitter as wormwood. Her, I'm going, I'm, her feet go down to death. Her ways are movable. I learned about strange women. <laughs> One, well, I learned not to be a strange woman. Mm -hmm. And two, I learned to look out for strange women. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, 
I learned to look out for a strange woman. Yeah, I learned to look for an evil man. Just from just from the scripture, because I want to be separate. I don't want to be that. But then God's so smart. He said, if you see a loud and clamorous woman, she always got to be seen in her. She's in this book. The Bible will tell you about her. So I learned not to be that. I learned, God, help me. Help me to be for your use. And then I learned to keep an eye out. So when I see a woman and she's smiling too hard at my boyfriend. Mm. <laughs> or she always need help. And nobody can help up with my boyfriend. Mm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Can't, nobody's stronger than him. Nobody's more convenient. He's the only person you know in your life. Right, you ain't got no daddy. You see them, you know, male friends. Every time you gotta call my boyfriend. Every time, everything he says is funny. It's not. It's not. It's not. No, see. 